I got back into the groove and sorted out my stitches and carried on working in the round. And now we're going to do a colour change. I can't stand sticking to only one or two colours, so I like to keep my colours changing. Um, that tail's still a bit on the long side, so I'll do one more pair and being very careful to pick up my green yarn in my right hand. Now I'm going to take my replacement colour and leave the tail sticking out, hold it along with the other colour and knit that stitch with them both held together. Now if you can remember at this stage to take the tail that you finished with to the front of the work, it does make it easy when it comes to darning in these ends. So we've got them both anchored with one, one double stitch. I wouldn't do this in single knitting, but here we've got so much complexity of colour and uh, texture and, and the two different layers that the double stitch really doesn't show. And we can't get down inside this knitting to hide it, so it act, acts almost as a duplicate stitch. And off I go with my new colour combination. I'm trying to change colours only one at a time, so I'm going to use this deep red for a while until I've got at least one or two rounds of that done. Then I'm going to change out the green and move it towards the darker green. So my, my greens are undulating from light to dark and my pinks are too with the odd bit of contrast thrown in. At this point I'm going to start thinking about tidying up some of the ends and here we've got a pair of ends. So I like to Not exactly neaten them as they go, but to stay on top of it so I don't have a million to do later. This stitch here was doubled, so there's the old yarn, there's the, the, the new one. And I want to take it out sideways because that's the way it would have gone. So I'm going to go out sideways and then I'm going to take it up inside this column of stitches. So I'm feeling on the inside make sure that the needle's not coming through um, and I've already got the double stitch which kind of holds things in place and if I just slide that up that column between the layers there's a little pocket in there and leave it sticking out and I can cut that off now so I've got about an inch of tail in there and I'm going to do the same with the other tail on the other side um, and you can see you can't do this straight away because you need some need some space. I could take them downwards um, but I want to make sure that it doesn't distort that stitch. So all the time that I'm uh, tidying up my ends and knitting this cuff I'm thinking about what, what's coming next. I know my intention colour wise is to get back into the green on the front and probably the dark red on the back just to coordinate with this end and now I'm starting to debate with myself uh, how many stitches I need for the mitten and what kind of thumb I'm going to make. So this is a pretty nice fit right now so that sort of tells me that I will probably want to put extra stitches in for my thumb. There are many ways of making a thumb. There's one where you make increases in this position and this position to give you a triangular wedge for the base of your thumb. There's another one where you simply make an opening on one side of the mitten so that's set in from the side, often called a saw thumb. And I'm also thinking about doing a, possibly doing a kangaroo pocket thumb where you don't change the number of stitches, but when you put a waist yarn in, you reduce the number of stitches. So all of these are decisions that I haven't yet made and I'm kicking around whilst I'm doing this. With 
that's today's instalment. Uh, I will continue mulling these big decisions and nip to the end of the cuff. <laughs>